Hello, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, and welcome. It's Nurse Richard. Thanks for joining me. Uh, there's three A's in this compilation for you here today. Uh, the first one's really interesting, uh, but you might get a bit frustrated by it. Uh, I'll tell you why. Um, this is a chap I went to see in a care room. So it's really difficult to do this sometimes because the gentleman was in bed and to try and work your way around um, the bed, get it to the right height, get yourself uh, your equipment fitting behind the pillows because it's a back of the pillow. It's really difficult. Um, but this is half the procedure. Um, we had this big black dark chunk here that we needed to get out. But uh, the other half, it ran out of uh, memory and battery. Uh, on the device I was recording it with, so I had to finish it off. So I apologise. I didn't get the second bit, but let's have a look what happens here. Just as I pull this forward with the Rosen inserter, you'll see this green liquid start spilling out. Um, and you're thinking, oh, what's all going on there? Now, it's clearly a bit of a nasty infection. Now, whether it's green because it's a mixture of like a yellow pus discharge and the brown of the earwax, that's possible. Um, there is an infection which is quite rare uh, called Pseudomonas, begins with a P, um, that you can get that does tend to produce a green discharge, but it does come with an unusual odour that sometimes, and I didn't smell any unusual odour there. So I suspect it, it, th there's, there's probably all sorts of bugs and bacteria in this. Um, but like I said, it was the, only the first bit I got. And what you'll see after I um, pull this out with the Rosen inserter is just a, an ear canal just covered in discharge and pus, not looking very happy at all. I'll be honest, we couldn't get all of it anyway. It was just nigh on impossible to do. So it needs, needs further treatment, you know, antibiotic spray, possibly a swab as well to isolate what type of infection it is. Have a look at this. There you go, see the green tinge to it there. Not very pleasant at all. And there it is afterwards. It's just full of this slime. Like I said, I did try and get as much as I could off that, but it, it just wasn't possible. Um, so it would have frustrated you anyway, even if I had um, enough battery in the devices to actually uh, film that recording, but I just didn't at the time. It was, it was a busy day. I must have done about five or six home visits in a row, and that was the last one. And despite me having portable uh, charging ports, um, even that ran out of batteries as well. And I just, <laughs> I just, I just ran out of juice everywhere, literally. Um, the second one here... This was a chap, if I remember rightly, who came to see me and I believe he found me on TikTok. So if this is you, then you're watching, then this is your ear. Because um, a lot of people do come and see me because they've seen me um, on, on a particular channel, be it TikTok, YouTube or Facebook, uh, which is great. It's free advertising <laughs> as, far as, I can, as far as I can see. Um, it's certainly cheaper than Google Ads, um, uh, but which is great. Hasn't affected the prices, by the way, just because a few people have found me on the internet and some people know me. Um, it's not got up at all. I'm not, not profiteering in any way. I'm not suggesting that anybody else is, but I couldn't do that. It wouldn't be right. Um, so, yeah, hello to you if you're watching. Now, the first part of his, um, <clears throat> his blockage is extremely soft and gooey and sludgy. A um, bit more formed behind it as soon as we get that bit out. Um, and we needed a good old squirt of oil in there. So I probably put a bit too much in, and that's why I'm just hoovering this up here. It, it went everywhere. Um, sometimes you do a couple of squirts, sometimes you do up to five, six, seven squirts. Depends how, how bad you think it is. But yeah, I probably put a bit too much in here, <laughs> which can obstruct the vision. You can get this problem, as you can see. We're getting the old, the old, the old dream sequence. So I'm not actually moving the suction tube there at the moment. It might look like it's moving, but it's not. It's the screen that's wobbling about. So what I have to do is wait till that settles down, find a particular angle where the endoscope isn't touching the um, isn't touching the uh, the oil, so you can get a clearer clearer vision, and then you can start to move the sucking tube towards the plug, because you, you you might be nowhere near it, you know. <laughs> it's very disorientating when it does get like that, but uh, it became clear enough, so we could grab hold of it. Like I said, a bit bit drier and a bit more bulky a bit lower down this one so the rest of it didn't uh, didn't put up too much of a fuss getting the last bit out it just got a bit too smeary again there so I just had to come away and wipe the camera and uh, and go again looks like he's old I'm not sure where he was actually um, looks like he's holding his ear up open there because it is quite uh, circular 
there. Now, we do do that with quite a, a few patients. Do it on the, on the last one as well, which was, just, which, which was a young lady. And it just makes it a, a lot easier to get out sometimes if you can open up the ear canal a bit better. Yes, you can open it up with the endoscope by stretching it, um, which is not particularly uncomfortable. If you, as long as you're not putting pressure on the bony part and the, on the, the part of the cartilage, then that, that's fine. But sometimes it's just easier to ask the patient or family use with them just to grab it, give it a little bit of a pull. Uh, and that really helps. So this last one here is two ears from the same uh, young lady. <coughs> it was a young lady. In the mid, mid, mid teens, I want to say. Again, hello to you if you're watching. And she's been having terrible trouble for quite a long time, and I can see why because this one was, um, it was extremely stuck. It was so adhered uh, to the ear canal, no gaps. The, the second one, loads of gaps around that, that came out dead easy. Uh, but this one, um, it was really wedged in there. Really wedged in there. So I'm just searching around, trying to find a decent grip, because I can see the whole thing is moving. <clears throat> so I think it is worth persevering with the suction here before we get uh, any other kind of tools out. As she was extremely nervous, I think it would be fair to say, which uh, a lot of young people are. As I say to a lot of them when they come, it's not as bad as going to the dentist. Um, apologies if there's any dentists watching, <laughs> but nobody likes coming to see you guys. <laughs> It just hurts a lot of the time. It's rare that it doesn't hurt. <laughs> Even the anaesthetic hurts. Oh yeah, I, I'm going for a, a procedure. In fact, uh, I got a call yesterday. Um, I've got to go and have some uh, surgery. Nothing major, so don't, don't panic. But I had a wisdom tooth removed. How long ago was it? About 10 years ago. And at the time, they said we can only remove uh, uh, it uh, partially. We can only remove part of it. They've got a partial coronectomy, they called it. And the reason being is they had to leave the root in there because they said the root was too close to one of the nerves, uh, one of the facial nerves, and it, it could have it comes with some risks of, um, of affecting the nerves in the face, which could have affected speech, sensation, and all that. So they decided it wasn't worth the risk. But that was based on um, an X-ray, which is detailed to some some extent, but. Um, not as detailed as an MRI scan. So I've been getting loads of infections in this root because it's just this, this dead root that's in there and it's all closed over. Uh, I'll get a load of jip from it. Um, so I got myself re-referred back <clears throat> to what we're gonna do about this. Can't keep having antibiotics every time it happens. Um, so they did an MRI scan and they found that, um, the, the more detailed MRI scan, found that the, the nerve that was passing by that root was uh, quite a distance away um, from that route, so there was no risk at all, or very, very, very low risk anyway, of any damage being caused. Um, so they agreed that they're going to do some surgery in a few months' time. I've been waiting about two years for that tel for that appointment just to discuss that with me. <laughs> but that's another story. Uh, another few months to wait for some surgery. <clears throat> I said it's only minor. <laughs> Please don't panic. It just reminded me while well, I mentioned about dentists. <clears throat> So as you can see, I've been having a, a right battle with this and finally managed to roll it forward. Uh, I think it would be fair to say she noticed a reasonable difference as soon as this thing came out. It was a good old chunk for a little ear. Fair bit of sticky skin go. attached to that as well. So uh, a few little bits around the edges. I'm not going to entertain them with a the nervous patient, absolutely not. Um, <clears> the <throat> second one wasn't giving her any trouble at all, but it's worth getting rid of this because uh, we don't want it to turn into the other one. And this practically jumped into the tube and said, uh, said yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy to come out quite quickly. Wish they all went like that. Fortunately not. <laughs> you can just see some of that sticky skin trying to come with it, can't you? Like a spider's web. And there it is, nice and clear afterwards. So I hope you enjoyed that, uh, but for now, take care of yourselves and I'll see you later. Ta-da.